Welcome to the Nano Networking and Molecular Communication module of the Colibri project. My name is Shukru Kuran from Boazici University. In this video, we will be covering the fifth part of the basic level of the module. We will be talking on communication channels and channel capacity evaluation. This part builds up upon the five-step communication model we have discussed in the earlier videos and explains how this capacity evaluation can be applied to the communication-wide diffusion system. A binary channel is a very basic communication channel model used in the field of information theory. Like all other generic channel models, the binary channel can be applied for the analysis of any communication system. It doesn't need to be a classical wired or wireless communication system. Any type of communication system, electromagnetic based, optical, diffusion based, even a dialogue between two human beings can be modeled with it. In this model, one symbol represents a single bit of information. 0 or 1. When this information is transmitted over the communication medium, it can arrive at the receiver unchanged or it can be warped due to numerous issues in the channel and arrive incorrectly at the receiver. We call the first case successful reception and the second case incorrect decoding. Here we define the four time varying intermediate parameters of the communication model as xt, the one-bit information to be transmitted, and t, the number of messenger molecules released from the transmitter, and bar t, the number of messenger molecules hit at the receiver within one symbol duration, and finally, the yt, the one-bit of information received at the receiver device. In the transmission part, the transmitter decides on the value of nt based on the current bit value of xt, as n0 if the bit value is 0, and N1 if the bit value is 1. These release molecules propagate in the channel and the receiver starts counting the number of messenger molecules hitting itself within the current symbol duration. If this value, the N bar T, is below a given threshold tau, the received information is translated as 0. If N bar T exceeds the same threshold, the receiver then decides that the transmitted message is carrying the bit value of 1. When we consider a simple diffusion process where all messenger molecules propagate through the environment independent from each other, we can say that n bar t, the number of messenger molecules hit at the receiver within a single symbol duration, is a binomial random variable with nt and f hit, reflecting the number of independent trials and each individual messenger molecules hitting probability. Then, to calculate the decoding probabilities, we need the four conditional probabilities of yt is equal to y given that xt is equal to x, where both y and x can either be 0 or 1. Putting the formulation of yt from the previous slide, for all of these four cases, we can write down the resulting probabilities as shown in the table here. To calculate these four probabilities, we first approximate the binomials to normal random variables. A binomial random variable given in the form n, p can be approximated to a normal random variable with n times p, comma, n times p times 1 minus p. Following this approximation, the n bar t can be approximated in this fashion from a binomial random variable into a normal variable like this. Then the decoding probabilities where y is equal to 1 can be converted into a regularized incomplete beta function, as shown here, and the complementary decoding probability where y is equal to 0 becomes 1 minus the same regularized incomplete beta function. After finding the closed form solutions for all four decoding probabilities, we can calculate the mutual information of the system where the input is given by capital X and the output by capital Y with this formula. This is a double summation with joint probabilities and conditional probabilities. The joint probabilities can be expanded into the multiplication of the conditional probability and the probability of the input having a specific bit value. The probability of the input to be a given bit value is solely dependent on the specific message. For this evaluation, it is usually assumed that for a specific bit value, it is equally likely to have a value of 0 and 1. Therefore, 
this probability is generally assumed to be 0.5 for both cases. We are nearly done. We just need one more step to go now. The mutual information we'll calculate is specific for a single tau threshold value. By definition, the channel capacity is the maximum possible mutual information rate of the system, which means we have to find the optimal threshold value that maximizes the mutual information. This statement is formalized by this mathematical optimization problem. A maximization problem of the mutual information calculation over all possible tau values. In a binary channel, this optimization problem can easily be solved by using an exhaustive search which yields the maximum mutual information, hence the channel capacity. So starting from finding the fraction of hitting values using the microscopic theory of diffusion and the scenario parameters, we calculate the channel capacity using information theory. After looking at them carefully, you can say that these calculations are not that hard to understand, yet alone solve. Remember that we use a simple binary channel for the capacity evaluation in this video. In reality, the system gets much more complicated with additional mechanisms and concerns. First of all, what happens if you want to differentiate between a zero-bit value and no human communication, aka silence? We have to consider third value for both the x and the y, which means we need two thresholds now instead of a single one. Another issue arises when we want to consider the effect of residual messenger molecules from the previous symbols on top of the current symbol. This is a very realistic problem, considering the transmitter is sending many bits one after another, and the messenger molecules do not just go away when the symbol duration expires. Lastly, in modern communication systems, a symbol rarely represents just one bit of information. Usually, a symbol represents two, three, or even four bits of information, which means that all the calculations above becomes much more messier and harder to calculate. So, we have finished calculating the channel capacity of a simple diffusion system considering a binary channel in which one symbol represents one bit of information. This analysis was focused specifically on the communication via diffusion system. We will be concluding the basic level with the details of the terahertz signaling in the sixth video of the basic level. Here you can see the reference of this video. Thank you for listening and see you next time.